everyone entering the public gallery, welcome them. Um, I'd also like to welcome Mr. Harry Harvey, his debut at the Public Accounts Committee, <laughs> following his recent expensive transfer. I thought the window had closed. Um, I have an audit on that, Harry. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, wish you well. Can I just say to members that all mobile phones must be set to airplane mode or on silent or turned off? It's not sufficient to put, put them on silent mode and leave them beside your mic because they really do interfere in this room with the recording system. The session is being recorded and uh, can be accessed live via online streaming either on the Assembly website or Democracy Live. Uh, anyone in the gallery who wish to use their mobile devices as long as they are in airplane mode, and all devices must be muted. Uh, they can connect to wi Assembly Wi-Fi. And the password details are available on the gallery rules. It's not permitted to take photographs or record any of the meetings. Agenda item one is apologies. Have we any apologies, members? No. Nope. Full house. Um, <coughs> agenda item two is the minutes of the meeting of the 5th of February. As last week, we were obviously at the audit office. Um, members will have seen the minutes, pages 6 to 11. Are members content with the draft minutes? Yep. Your permission okay. to sign them? Okay. okay. Um, matters are arising. Can I just, on behalf of the committee, record our thanks to the uh, Audit and Controller General for hosting our visit to uh, the Audit Office last week. Um, for those of us who are new to the committee, I'm sure it was very beneficial. I know some of the older hands need to go because they've been before. Uh, and I think it might be um, an idea Commissioner, if we send a wee note to Kieran just to uh, express our thanks. Um, Declaration of uh, interest members, uh, that each committee members are required to register relevant financial or other interests in the that, that might be in the members' interest. Do any members have any interest they wish to declare? Okay. Good. Item 5, correspondence, which is at pages 14 through to 40. First piece of correspondence in pages 14 to 22 was received on the 30th of January. Of this year. The correspondence is from a whistleblower, and I am proposing that it be dealt with in item 10, i.e. any other business, due to its sensitivity. Are members content with this action? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Members, the second piece of correspondence at pages 23 and 24 has been received from Anne Watt, Director of Pivotal, which was dated the 7th of February 2020. Um, I understand that Pivotal is a new independent think tank, which has now produced a report called Moving forward putting Northern Ireland on the track for the future. They are a pol public policy forum. <coughs> Miss Watt, the, the Director, has asked for an opportunity to discuss this report and her future work. Is the Committee content that we write to Miss Watt to thank her for her letter and invite her to brief the PAC at a meeting in the near future? Members agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Members, the third piece of correspondence from pages 25 to 27 is a further email from Mr Edward Cook dated the 12th of February 2020. Mr Cook has made further allegations in relation to Section 75 feelings and funding to the University of Ulster. Uh, is the committee content to forward this correspondence to the Economy Committee to consider the issues with regard to the funding of the University of Ulster? This is a live case, not within the remit of this committee, uh, to comment at this stage. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Are members content that we write to Mr Cook advising Agreed. that the committee has considered the correspondence and then forward the correspondence <coughs> to the Economy Committee for it to consider? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> members, fourth piece of correspondence, pages 20 to 40. Is a member from the Audit Office dated the 13th of February 2020. It includes the Northern Ireland Audit Office first day brief dated the 13th of February 2020. The Audit Committee is requesting the views of the Public Accounts Committee in relation to the NIAO budget position. The first day brief is at pages 29 through to 40, setting out the strategic corporate framework and subsequent savings by the reduction of staff members, the reduction of senior grades, and the recruiting of new staff under the new structure. Is the committee content 
uh, to note that the capital resources of 4. 06 million are required for the re refurbishment of its premises and currently the NIO, <coughs> uh, sorry, NIAO are working with ASIB and the Department of Finance Construction and Procurement Delivery to ensure costs are managed within the set budgets. Do members have any queries or questions on the position? No. Nope. Nope. Members content that we write to the public, sorry, the audit committee stating that the PAC is content with this approach and that it be kept, uh, that we be kept updated in the final budget outcome and associated timelines. Agreed, members? Agreed. Okay. okay. Item six is a briefing from RAIS. We just keep your ease until we get the delegation into the meeting. Members should be aware, obviously, I'm sure you all have realised by now that the presentation by Ray is not in the um, uh, pack, but is in the table pack. Um, but you would know that this is a live show because I don't think they're there. No? Just. Okay. Okay, we'll just take our leave until we try and locate them in the building. Okay. Members will welcome um, Mr. Michael Scholes, researcher from RIAs, and invite <coughs> you, Mr. Scholes, to a brief committee. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Chair. <coughs> so, <coughs> so today I'm going to give a very brief um, overview of the Research and Information Service, or RIAs, and how really we can support uh, the members and uh, the wider assembly. So RAISE is the Assembly's dedicated in-house, non-partisan, confidential research and information service. So the key terms there really are non-partisan and uh, confidential. So excuse me, I'm a bit out of breath. Um, <clears throat> so really we support members in their, in their plenary work, and their committee work and their um, constituency work as well. Um, we also produce work for the, the Commission and the wider Secretariat. So the structure of RAISE is basically the Board of Management, the Research Service itself, uh, Library and then admin support is provided by the Central Support Unit. So over the next couple of slides I'm going to focus on the Research Service itself. So there are four uh, senior research officers who are responsible for four areas. And the research portfolios follow um, basically the committee structures. For example, I work in the finance and economics team, which covers subjects that fall <coughs> under the old uh, employment and learning committee. So if you can see on slide four there, there's a breakdown of the research portfolios. Now we roughly, whenever we are at full capacity, we roughly have 16 research officers working underneath the, the senior research officers. Um, and you can see the, the broad spectrum of the portfolios there in the, um, in the organisation chart. Um, now, I'm going to talk about the outputs that we, we actually produce, the work that we produce. As you can see on slide five, there's a, there's a wide variety of, of different outputs and uh, research briefings that we do produce. 
Uh, these include blog articles, the normal kind of research briefings that the committee would re receive, and uh, mapping services as well. So the the next couple of slides, really, um, I tried to have a think about the work of this particular committee and, and uh, pull out some of the briefings that would be relevant to this committee's particular work. So um, I pulled out two papers from the Public Finance and Scrutiny Unit. The first one really is a, um, is a review of costs for a particular piece of legislation. Uh, in this case, it's a licensing <coughs> and registration of clubs bill. And the next one then is a review of the Department for Health's um, annual report and accounts for 15-16. Um, both of these papers really provided um, potential lines of questioning for members that they could use whenever um, uh, witnesses came in front of them. And also really peppered throughout each of the reports uh, were some scrutiny points that the members might find useful again whenever um, uh, people were in front of them, they could think about um, various questions. And really, just in the final few slides, um, I've produced some links to the outputs and the services that we have. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few. So I'm happy to take any questions that members may have. Okay, thank you. Um, can I ask, in terms of your Board of Management, mm -hmm. um, who sits on your Board of Management and is oh, appointed? Yeah, on the Board of Management, there's the Head of Raise. Um, would you like me to name names? Or yes, yeah, yes. well, that would be John Parr. He would be the head of RAISE. And then the, the four senior um, research officers are Eileen Reagan, Tim Moore, Robert Barry, and Tony Markham. Sorry, Robert, Robert Barry and to Tony Markham, Job Share, and Dan Hull as well. So it's actually five, excuse me. It's five, mm -hmm. but, but two Job Share. So are they the Board of Management? Yes, that's the Board of Management for, uh, for the research service, yes. Mm -hmm. So they're. Are they essentially self-appointed? Yes, okay. that would be correct. Yeah. So who? I'm not suggesting you do a bad job, but who who assesses whether you're doing a, a, a good homework. job homework? Yeah. Um, well, really, it would be. I mean, a lot of a lot of the stuff that we do would really be. Um, well, we produce a lot, quite a lot of, as I said, a, a variety of uh, of different papers and different outputs, mm -hmm. but. Really, it would be down to our clients, who are mainly the committees or members, to actually have a look and um, and say whether or not they agree with it. A lot of the stuff, really, <coughs> with our research output, we don't tend to make, you know, you should do this um, type of statements. We, we produce the evidence, as I said, um, it's evidence-based uh, papers, and it's down really to to the clients how they use it. But in terms of in terms of that sort of audit function, if you like. The, um, well, the, 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 head, the head of service would ultimately be responsible for the output. The head and, of civil uh, service? Sorry, no, the, the head of the, the research service. Right, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. So all, all of the papers uh, that we produce would be peer-reviewed, first of all, mm -hmm. by all the other researchers. Um, then the, the particular senior researcher uh, would review that paper to make sure it was accurate and it covered what was asked. Um, and then, if it was deemed that the head of service um, needed to look at it, he would look at it again. So, in terms of your clients, is it is it basically people those within the assembly in terms of committees and so on? Mainly, yes. It would be mainly members. Um, com committees can ask us to do a piece of research on anything that they like, usually through the clerk. Um, yeah. So, ma our main clients, if you like, would be members, either for their own. Um, Work or for under their uh, sorry uh, committee responsibility. Okay, Mr. Lund, you do? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. How many people are actually involved all together in the unit? Um, well, as I said, the there's a senior um, sorry head of service, and there would be five senior research officers. There would be roughly whenever we're at full um, capacity, there would be about 15, 16 research officers. Um, over the last three years, we're, we're really down to about ten or eleven. Um, uh, so we are there are some vacancies in, in the service, and then in terms of the library, um, I think there are there's a senior librarian, two librarians, uh, and then three or four admin staff. But I can certainly provide the more accurate right, figures. Sorry, all, all of the structure is actually on assist on the assist pages, so you can actually see yeah. exactly who does what. Mm. 
Uh, and, uh, well, the, about 27 or 28 then you're talking about altogether, plus the board? I guess so, yeah. 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 30. Uh, but you've been less than that over the last three years. Yeah, we have lost a lot of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Do, you, do you anticipate going back up to full complement now? I hope so, yeah. But, but it's not for me. But um, but yes, I think we are trying to get well, it. If, if it's not for you, Michael, who, who is it? I mean, who will make that? You're saying full capacity is 15 or 16 researchers. Um, who will make that decision uh, to, to increase the staffing levels? Well, the head of service would... Um, Put forward a business case for each um, vacancy, two. and that would go the head of service. Yes, two. Oh, so to the commission, okay. uh, and then the commission would also ultimately be responsible. Um, well, first it would go to HR, and then it would go to, to the commission would sign off on it. I'm not totally 100% of that procedure, um, but certainly I would imagine that would be running along something like that, those kind of lines. Okay. Are you finished, Mr. Lund? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, who audits you? <laughs> Sorry? Who, who audits you? Well, the um, Chair asked that earlier on, and really... Um, I didn't hear you, sorry. The, <laughs> well, well we, we do tweet and publish <clears throat> most of our work. If we do a, a committee paper, um, it will automatically be published on the website um, for anyone to see. So if any uh, anyone there doubts or refutes anything that we say in our papers, they obviously can contact the assembly and say no, this is not correct or yeah. whatever. Um, so, at, so to answer your question, the the papers are peer reviewed by all of the research officers. Mm -hmm. Then they go to the senior researcher, um, who's in charge of that particular um, portfolio or team, and they would um, ultimately sign sign off the paper if you um, like. I'm, I'm more thinking about your your budget and value for money sort of approach, because. <coughs> yeah, we could do it for you, I suppose. But um, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not criticising. Believe me, I'm just curious about the setup and the overall scale of the operation. No. You know, I think you've, you've told me enough. Okay. Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Michael. I'm just wondering: is the service available um, out of hours, type of thing, or is it just a working hours type thing? Can you be contacted at any time, or what's um, availability? <laughs> um, it's, it's the norm would be working hours, but can you think of a particular ex example that you, you know? Say if something cropped up, chair, uh, <coughs> maybe an evening time where you needed information. Yeah. Um, is there a channel to do that, or is it? There wouldn't be really an organ. Uh, um, I can't really think of a channel like yeah. that that would. Uh, that that's not in the structure of the yeah. research service, really. Yeah. No, um, they, as they, whenever plenary runs, the, the library runs an hour after plenary uh, the house closes, so there would be a, a chance to go into the library um, after that would be only on Monday and Tuesdays. But, yeah. um, but it's, so hopefully that will. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Mr. Dallas. <coughs> uh, Chairperson, thanks, Michael, for your presentation. Uh, one of the most su successful bodies in this assembly has been the Education Service. Uh, and there was in the past some outreach as well to try and inform the wider community of what exactly the assembly does. Do you have any input into that? Yeah, well, what I can say is we, we have, um, if you like, um, the Public Scrutiny Unit has produced some um, workshops that, um, that show that try and um, sort of demystify the budget process, um, and we've we've done some work around that for, um, to, for engagement with external bodies, and also we did we had a presence at the Balmoral Show, for example, a few years ago, uh, where we had a stall at um, the Balmoral Show trying to explain exactly what the research service does within the in the assembly. Um, that stopped really because really the, I mean. People were more interested, perhaps, in other areas of, of, the, of the assembly than the research service. But we have tried um, engagement. But I guess that the problem is that the, the service itself is really for members and for members of the secretariat. So we don't want the public getting the wrong idea that they can actually use our services because they can't. Chairperson, I wasn't suggesting that. I was simply asking the question to see if you had any input on it enhancing the delivery of the services overall, because the education service is particularly good. Yeah. And young people, of course, are inquisitive, want to be brought up to date, and I would have thought yeah. perhaps would have had some 
interest in your work? Yeah, well, we we have we have helped the education service in their um, their presentations, and we work closely with them. Um, so, but that is certainly an area that we could look, look to in the future. Mr. Boylan, hey, thank you, Chair Michael. Thank you very much for your presentation. And I have to commend the work that raised. We've used it. I've used it a number of times in terms of helping us all with debates and everything else. I mean, the, the paper is very good. I just want to tie it into the, the actual search and evidence base. I mean, do you, do you update it all the time in terms of bringing your papers forward, or how does that work out? Yeah, we would. Um, we, we would do that as a matter of course. We, we have we we have um, papers that that senior research officers would always um, ask us to <coughs> keep a watching brief on various areas. So every every time sort of legislation changes or things need to be updated, we would do that as a matter of course. Um, we would do that really through um, proactive pieces really that aren't commissioned because um, obviously members are, own, are excuse me are interested in their specific areas but we need to keep a, keep a wider um, a brief so we would do that through really proactive pieces right, and I'm that is done as a matter of course I know, and just sorry to you chair um just to all the pieces i mean you were saying there but they've been peer reviewed by a number of, yeah. is is then obviously those papers are out on file anybody could use them are they you know, can anybody commission them out or the likes of, i'm thinking about the likes of the universities or yeah any students are studying or, or pieces for that piece or that type of one? Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. The, the the committee papers that we produce are published on the website, so anyone can view them. If I did a, did a, um, uh, did a paper for yourself, for example, um, you would have ownership for that, but no one else, you would need to agree with us that it could be published in a certain way. So that would be something that we would need to, need to talk through. Um, but essentially, as I said before, the service is really for the members, not for the wider public. So, so we don't really disseminate information. You, you haven't like really that. thought about that uh -huh. because I only said in the context we use that information as part of a conversation and debate in the chamber. Yeah. A lot of the papers that you have, very, even committee informed yes. committee. So, I was just asking yeah. in that context. Well, I mean, we do have a, a offer a confidential service, so um, the, the member would have to agree that that was okay that we released that information. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank okay. you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, members, can we, with your agreement, move to closed session? Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. This is the Northern Ireland.